what is going on guys welcome back to the channel we are talking project ascension again and we're talking strictly about season 8 world enchant i've gotten the okay from dutch the lead man himself to give you guys a, an exclusive sneak preview at some of the world enchants coming in the season 8 update a lot of these REs look super badass. I know McDouble's already made a video going over some of them, but we're going to be going over quite a few in this video, and I'm going to give you guys my impression of them as a realm first raider looking to push performance to its absolute limit. If you guys like this video and want to see more things like, remember, subscribe below, hit the like, and the bell button right down there as well. We go live every day on twitch.tv slash drydeck underscore TV at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Without further ado, let's get into this video, dude. It's going to be hype! All right, guys, I want to start here with this legendary RE because this thing looks insane. Disciple of the Sea Witch transforms Chain Lightning into Forking Lightning. Forked Lightning grants you a charge of prodigious storms, teaches you Tornado. This channeled spell deals Frost Storm damage at your target location. You can auto shot while channeling the spell. Very, very cool. While Fingers of Frost is active, your Frost Bolt and Ice Slant activate prodigious storms causing lightning to fork out dealing frost storm damage so i'm assuming frost storm damage is lightning and uh, cold damage combined while mana shield is active your auto shots consume mana to add frost damage to each attack and grant you a stack of storm conduit very very cool i like that storm conduit increases the damage of your next lightning bolt by x percent and increase your critical strike chance this effect can only occur once every one second Okay, so just off of what is said here, I'm assuming this is going to be coming from Lady Vosh in SSC. So, sorry, seasonal guys. <laughs> You're probably not going to be getting this for a while. But uh, fingers crossed, maybe we get some of these on Area 52 before seasonal does. Um, so, everything about this is really cool. I mean, you literally turn into Lady Vosh. This is everything she does. She sends out forked lightning. She has tornadoes. Um, she does, uh, you know, fingers of frost. She has frost bolts and ice lances. Um, the mana shield being active is pretty cool and giving like adding frost damage to each attack So depending on how powerful that is um, I could see this being really really powerful for like a haste hunter specifically using the hurricane bow So hurricane bow I believe has a on cold uh, on hit cold proc damage already um, Or it could be nature either way. It's a really really fast attacking bow and it uh, already has an on hit effect so depending on how much mana this drains and how much damage it adds, it could add an entire new archetype to the to the game, which I'm super excited for. I don't know how strong it's going to be like in raids. Most hunter builds are topping out around 14 to 17 and a half K right now in absolute push to the limit gear. So if this opens up a whole new archetype, I'd be really excited for that. OK, let's move on to the next one. Disciple of Arugal. This one's really, really cool. I'm assuming we're going to get this from uh, SF uh, Shadowfang Keep because I think this one was actually shown in the trailer transforms arcane missile into shadow missiles your shadow bolt can trigger missile barrage if you know the final rank dealing damage with corruption or curse of agony grants you lessons in shadow dealing critical strike damage with shadow bolt corruption or curse of agony grants a rugal's fury shadow missiles launches launches shadow missiles at the enemy so this basically just turns your arcane missiles into shadow missiles shadow missiles taint your target uh, the debuff tainted shadow missiles taint your target causing them to take more damage from your corruption curse of agony and shadow bolt and increasing the critical strike chance of corruption and curse of agony stacks 10 times doesn't say the values of what that actually is i'm assuming maybe it's one or even two percent would be super super strong that sounds awesome lessons in shadow increase the chance of your shadow bolt will trigger missile barrage by three percent pretty good a uh, rugal's fury your next shadow missile deals additional damage and is more likely to critically strike you can store up to 20 charges again it doesn't say what the more likely to critical strike is but regardless this is a really really sick re i like how the fact that they changed arcane missiles already one of my favorite skills and if they give this a really nice visual like shadow missiles flying at the target this is going to be really sick um i could see this being actually really really powerful giving more damage and more crit chance to both corruption and curse of agony of course depending on how much of those vows each you get could be insanely powerful keep an eye out for this re i think it's going to be super super fun and really really powerful Moving on to an epic. This is called Iron Sand. Requires Hellfire. <laughs> Transforms Hellfire into Iron Sand. Channel a storm of Iron Sand surrounding the target, dealing periodic nature strike damage to all nearby enemies every 0.92 seconds. Lasts almost 14 seconds. So... 
I don't know if this is going to lock you in place or you can cast it and then move or if this is just an elemental shift of hellfire. Either way, what I think nature strike damage is just from the name is going to be nature and physical damage, both of which are super, super good at keeping threat. I made a build guide on like the like the, the best shield tank you can make right now um, a while ago and is using things like deadly poison and the tempest shield uh, talent in shaman because it, for some reason, it was just generating an, a buttload of threat and if this is both physical and nature damage combined you can scale those up cr incredibly well you already get good scaling off physical damage but you also have that re that increases nature threat dealt by 30 percent so keep an eye out for this this could be extremely powerful for tanking Moving on to the next one, Nessingwary's Big Game Shot, a new hunter ability, which is pretty cool, always glad to see new hunter stuff, teaches you Big Game Shot. This empowered aim shot has a cast time and requires one stack of hunting to cast. Hitting a target with aim shot that is affected by hunter's mark grants you a stack of hunting. Big Game Shot, an aim shot that deals weapon damage plus a certain amount. Hunting, hunting enables Big Game Shot. Each stack also increases the damage of this spell by 30%, stacks up to three times. Now this could be really, really powerful. Again, depending Depending on how much that value is scaling up as you level it could be a new uh, addition to a hunter a physical based hunter um, the fact that you get three stacks increasing the damage by 90% is just insane we already use the uh, aim shot to re I can't remember off the top of my head that increase the damage by 30% um, I believe it's 12%, something like that, and then makes it re refresh the duration so you can cast it again. And that's already a really, really powerful RE for the physical multi-shot Tools of War Hunter that I play. And depending on the internal cooldown, which it doesn't say this has it, but of course this is just speculation, if it doesn't have an internal cooldown and depending on how fast you can get this thing up, being able to get three stacks, this is going to just... It's going to do a crazy amount of damage. I mean, Aimshot already crits for like 11k in like full raid buffs and everything. And with this, I could see this thing crit in like 22, 24k. This would be insanely strong. I'm really, really looking forward to using this. I don't know how strong it's going to be in PvP, but I don't PvP. So really looking forward to it. This one I am super, super excited about. Okay, Shield of the Emperor requires Shield Slam, Avatar, and Impact, which I believe is a Fire Mage talent. Uh, your shield slam now has a chance to proc impact and avatar, okay? Impact stuns the target for 1.5 seconds. Not going to be useful in raids specifically because raid bosses themselves are immune to stun unless there's a specific mechanic around that, but I haven't seen anything yet. But this is going to be super good for Mythic Plus. Uh, depending on how they code the shield slam, I could see things like the Crimson Champion. Uh, when you use shield slam, it hits multiple targets. Depending if how they code it. I don't know if that's a separate spell ID or if they're just replicating your shield slam hitting multiple targets. But depending on how they code this, this is going to be really good for Bulwark because Bulwark actually casts a minor shield slam. So every time Bulwark pulses, it has a chance to stun everything that hits it. And depending on the DR for this, it could be an extremely powerful tool for shield tanks and Mythic Plus. So I'm super looking forward to that. Avatar. Transform into an unstoppable Colossus for three seconds, causing you to deal 15% increased physical damage and take 30% less damage. So anytime you can give shield tanks a flat DR is really, really powerful because the defense of shields is being able to block, dodge, or parry at the avoidance cap. And as soon as you become stunned, feared, and incapacitated in any way, you lose all ability to mitigate and you just get absolutely hammered. So giving shield tanks a flat DR is really, really good. It also says while in this state you move at 80% speed, so you move a little bit slower, and you can't be reduced nor increased from that amount, you are also immune to immobilizing effects. So this one seems really interesting. So right now in uh, in TK, in, in the eye, the, the uh, high astromancer Solarian, her second phase, when you get her into the Void Walker, she puts this crazy, like, speed buff on you. And you can do the RP walk to slow yourself down. But if you're in Avatar, you don't even have to do that. So this, like, eliminates that mechanic entirely. So shield tanks, this looks amazing. Be super excited for this. I am, I am jonesing to try this out for myself, all right? 
Moving on to another epic one. Piercing Cleaver requires both Piercing Howl and Execute. Teach you Piercing Cleaver. Piercing Cleaver. Piercing Cleaver throws a cleaver at up to five nearby enemies, dealing amount of physical damage based on attack power and increasing the damage the target takes from your Execute by 15% for eight seconds, stacking up to 10 times. This ability causes high threat. Now, of course, depending on how much attack power that was when the uh, screenshot of this was taken, this could be incredibly powerful for both single target and uh, AOE. The other thing, making your execute take up to 150% increased damage is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Execute already hits like a truck, and increasing that by 150% is going to be insane. Now, of course, depending on the uptime of this, um, if there's downtime and you lose some stacks, either way, if even this averages out to six to seven stacks, it's still going to be a crazy powerful RE. But the this ability causes high threat, so I don't know why they tacked that on there. Um, it could be indicating maybe we're going to get some some like dual wield execute fury warrior tank, which would be super badass. A lot of the guys in my guild and me personally have always wanted a really, really powerful dual wield tank. And maybe this is the start of it. The other thing, the ability causing high threat maybe just is like a consideration for DPS. But honestly, in, when you're when you really, really push in performance, threat's not an issue. Your, your tanks generate so much threat. And if you're any good at being a raider you're gonna have fade feign death invisibility all these things to reduce your threat so this is not gonna be a non-factor but this is gonna be crazy strong man okay so moving on I know McDoubles covered serpent form in his video but I want to give you guys my opinion as a realm first raider of why I think this re is probably gonna be one of the candidates to be the most broken okay so not to belabor the point but your 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 cat form gets turned into serpent form okay Shapeshift into serpent form, increasing melee attack power by a set amount, plus 50% of agility, and causing your auto attacks to deal bonus nature damage. Serpent strike claws the enemy dealing damage, increasing the damage you deal with instant and deadly poison by 3%. Doesn't say it's going to stack, but maybe it will, even if not, still pretty good. Serpent venom, finishing move that poisons the target, damage increased per combo point and by your attack power and nature power. So that is already some spell power scaling there. Venom is fury, finishing move that causes nature damage per combo point and converts extra points of energy up to a maximum of 6 to 12 extra energy into additional damage. Damage increased by your attack power. Now, the reason I say this one could be one of, if not the most powerful one that I got uh, exclusive access to, is because the 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 current like top end cats when we were doing like our realm first void reaver run um they were doing anywhere from like 22 to 24 k dps if i remember right and they were pushing like 6500 attack power and like over 5,000 spell power just due to some scaling through talents and gearing, okay? So depending on how hard this scales, this could dominate when it comes out. So keep an eye out on this if you're a cat main. This is gonna be so busted if it scales correctly. All right, moving on, Dark Master. This one is really, really cool. I'm assuming this is gonna be coming from Dark Master Gandling in Sholomance, just because everything about this screams Dark Master uh, Gandling. So let's go over it. Your dominated undead and enslaved demon applies Necromancer's Touch when dealing damage with their abilities. It takes damage equal to 5% of its max HP each time it applies Necromancer's Touch. Your Shadow Bolt and Haunt hits give you Harvested Essence. If Drain Soul is used with five stacks of Harvested Essence, it will apply a stack of Afflicted Soul for each tick of damage. Upon hitting 15 stacks, it applies Ruptured Soul. Drain Life only heals for 20% of the damage dealt, but now also heals your Dominated, Undead, and Enslaved Demon. Could be really good for PvP. Not really sure how useful it is for PvP, but let's continue. Necromancer's Touch, taking 20% more damage from drain life stacking up to 10 times so a flat 200 percent increase to drain life very very cool harvested essence your next drain life or drain soul has 10 percent reduced cast time and will hit 10 percent faster stacks up to five times the reason i say that could be really good for pvp because if you get like 20 stacks of this and then just blast them with a like a super concentrated drain life or drain soul you're gonna decimate people and depending on how well this snapshots and rage could be really really powerful as well ruptured soul target takes takes 20% increased damage from the caster's shadow damage over time effects lasting 30 seconds, prevents generation of stacks of afflicted soul. Okay, so 
everything about this is insanely strong. So this is obviously going to incentivize you to use Drain Life, Drain Soul, and it kind of seems like it's pushing Drain Soul to be like your big payoff and filling in the DPS gaps with Shadow Dots. So Shadow QZ, dude, if you're still not playing, get back on, dude. This is going to be your build. You could break this if anybody else could, okay? Another legendary RE, Garabashi Berserker, requires recklessness. Your recklessness is transformed into Garabashi Rage. Your Raging Blow, Slam, and Execute Criticals now give you a stack of Garabashi Berserker. Your Siege Breaker Criticals now extend your Garabashi Rage by 4 seconds, or activate Garabashi Rage for 4 seconds. So the fact that it says, or activate, means you can use Siege Breaker to start this, and then depending if you can get the cooldown far enough, you could then refresh it or add some duration to it. Very, very cool. If you have Rank 3 Blood Surge is transformed into Garabashi Blood Surge. Garabashi Rage, go berserk, increasing all rage generation by 50% and granting melee abilities 20% increased critical strike chance for 12 seconds. Now again, depending on the uptime, that could be unreal. Our melee lead steady, he's already playing like a marauder, melee, you know, single-minded fury guy, and he already pushes like 23k DPS, so depending on how strong that is, Dude, it's going to be crazy. Moving down, Garabashi Berserker. Increase your abilities rage cost by 3% and reduce your warrior's GCDs specifically by 3.33. Stacks per uh, seconds per stack cannot go lower than one second. So I'm assuming this means um, you can stack it up maybe... It doesn't matter. It's just however it, how long it takes to get down to one second. Doesn't really matter. Stacks are irrelevant. If Raging Blow is used with plus six stacks, it has a 10% chance to refund a charge of Raging Blow or instead a 25% chance on normal hit and 50% on critical strike chance to reduce the cooldown of Siege Breaker by 10 seconds and Garabashi Rage by four seconds. Again, depending on how many times you can get through that, that seems insane. Now, I am wondering, this says it cannot go lower than one second for the GCD. So what I'm wondering, is that going to hard cap GCDs and haste values at one second for warriors who are using this? Or is it going to be coded where this is going to take it all the way to one second and then haste values are going to bring it down below that? It would be good either way because if it caps it, that means you can focus on uh, scaling other stats. But if this takes it down to one and then haste values further increase that, you could be looking at some insane DPS that way. The last one, Garabashi Blood Surge. Your Motor Strike, Execute, Slam, Whirlwind, and Bloodthirst hits have a 100% chance of giving you a Raging Blow Charge and making it cost no Rage and ignore 50% of the target's armor. This effect has a 6 second cooldown. Okay, so this is super synergistic. So in my eyes, you like, you charge in, you do like Mortal Strike, Bloodthirst, whatever, boom, you get a Raging Blow, okay? This automatically makes it deal more damage, cost no Rage. You then use Raging Blow, get a stack of Garabashi's Berserker, if you have six stacks later in the fight and this triggers, boom, you get another free one. You get like three raging blows in a row and then you go berserk and deal 20% increased critical strike chance. Dude, this is going to be insane. Again, depending on how they scale this, melee guys, especially like dual wield axe marauder like smash them up builds this is going to be the legendary re to look after okay super super powerful blood for the blood god this is the one on the thumbnail okay transforms mutilate into rashazi talon your damaging rogue finisher moves have a 20 percent chance per combo point to trigger one stack of bathe in blood per bleed effect active on your target now that immediately doesn't say uh your bleed effects so as many bleed effects are on the target, you're going to get one stack of Bathe in Blood, so this could be extremely quick stacking. When you have stacks of Bathe in Blood active, your hunger for blood, you explode into favor of the Soul Flare. Very cool. Having Blood for the Blood God equipped extends your Crimson's Tempest base duration by four seconds. Rashaji Talon uh, instantly strike with both weapons for 135% weapon damage, plus an additional each weapon. Damage is increased by 5% per bleed effect on your target awards two combo points so this turns your mutilate into this now the 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 one thing that really uh strikes my 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 eye with this is the fact that it says damage is increased by five percent per bleed effect on your target again not your bleeds so that you can have like six or seven maybe even eight bleed effects on the character that is going to do an insane amount of damage bathe in blood your bleed effects deal 10 percent more damage stacking up to 30 times also eviscerate and dispatch deal 2% more damage per stack. Bathe in Blood cannot be refreshed after it hits 30 stacks. That is really, really good because if you keep this up all the time, that would be insane. But even if this averages out to maybe like 
14 to 15 stacks on average throughout a fight, you're still getting 150% more damage for bleeds. And let's see, that's 30% um, more damage for eviscerate. That's going to be unbelievably powerful man favor of the soul flayer siphon power from the blood god your hunger for blood causes physical damage to all enemies within eight yards very cool so it turns into an actual dps cooldown that's cool further increased by consuming your bathe in blood stacks increasing the caster's critical strike damage by 30 percent for 15 seconds so again depending on how many times you can stack bathe in blood and how fast you can you could see I could see people who are really, really pushed performance kind of get into that sweet spot where it's like, I want the I want the stacks for Bathe in Blood and kind of capitalize on that, but I also want to be able to pop um, uh, the, what is it? The, wow, I'm drawing blank. Hunger for Blood, excuse me, when it comes off cooldown to do this big AoE nuke or something. Super, super good. I think this is going to open up a lot of new play possibilities. I think this one's going to be super powerful for raids as well. As far as REs, guys, that's all I have for you today. Maybe if we, uh, if we could generate enough hype behind these videos, maybe Dutch will let us contrain creators have a little bit more sneak peek at some of these because these look insane, dude. Season 8 looks so badass, dude. I'm so excited. I don't know how much I'm actually going to personally be playing it because I'm going to be balancing a bunch of other things but i'll tell you now if you haven't played season in a while or returning player or just want to give it for you know get in there for the first time to maybe try to find some of these and play with them these are going to be absolutely busted super fun to play with i'm really looking forward to actually seeing what uh, what my guys and what i can do and what you guys can do with them as well and with that this video is done guys remember to subscribe below for more content i will see you in the next video peace